Hey everybody, Anthony Cazenza here with the Orange and Black Insider Bengals podcast and CincyJungle.com. A couple of months ago, we had the opportunity to get to know Mike Daniels as he was a new big ticket free agent signing for the Cincinnati Bengals on their defense. We got to know the family man, we got to know about his background in football and some of his interests off of the field. However, what we didn't learn much about was his dedication to weight training, exercise regimens, and what he had to do this offseason in the COVID pandemic to prepare himself to be healthy and a productive member of a team as he was looking for another job in the NFL. And we learned not only about his thoughts about the team and the direction that they're heading, but we learned a bit about his workout regimen and what steps he took to ensure he was going to be as healthy as possible this year. And if an injury did come up, which unfortunately it did, that he has prepared himself physically to be able to bounce back from an injury far quicker than he had before. Check out this feature on Mike Daniels. John Sheeran and myself sat down, talked with him, and went through some of his off-season workout plans. We think you'll enjoy it. What's up, Bengals fans? The Orange and Black Insider Bengals podcast is happy to have back on the show Bengals defensive lineman Mike Daniels. He comes back on the show, coinciding with his return to the active roster after dealing with an injury a little bit, but we're stoked to have him back on the show. We've got a lot to talk about. Mike, how you doing, man? Coming off a big win this week. How you doing? I'm good. I'm really good. Definitely coming off a big win. It's, uh, it's always nice going to the bye week with a win. Yeah, and you were a, a big part of that victory, and it was a big win for the team. Beat a very good team in the Tennessee Titans and really have the, the team feeling better about itself right now. We'll talk about that. We also want to know about – last time we talked to you, we, we learned quite a bit about you off the field in terms of your hobbies and whatnot. One thing we didn't really get to touch on, though, was your workout regimen and how that has helped you not only get back on track to – be a contributor with the Bengals this year, but also bouncing back from the injury that you sustained this year and your quick recovery there. So we've got some videos we want to share and all of that good stuff. But before we do, we want to kind of get your pulse on the Cincinnati Bengals after this win. Um, there's been a lot of headlines, as you probably know, uh, with the team in terms of some players, you know, players being traded and some public comments by some players. But I think winning cures it all. How is the team feeling after this one, beating the Titans this week? Uh, it's a good feeling in the locker room, right? Uh, if there was anything going on that may have been a distraction to, like, you know, someone who's a little more focused than others, all that's out the window now. That big win that we had, uh, it definitely shows that we were a team of great focus, great poise, and not, not, nothing was going to, um, you know, get in the way of that. And we just really did a really good job so that the atmosphere is good. Uh, it's definitely conducive towards making a lot of improvements. And, uh, you know, it's just time to get ready to get the next one. In, in this game, you know, you guys went up against a, a a high-powered offense in the Titans with Ryan Tannehill and Derek Henry. You guys did a lot of good things, especially compared to the last couple of weeks when you had some some questionable performances on defense. What was really the main difference in kind of turning things around this week? Um, We were focused on the coaches did a really great job. Coaches had a really good plan. And honestly, our attitude, I feel, is what carried us over. You know, we had a lot of guys, a lot of new guys, whether you got guys coming off of IR, myself, uh, guys who've only been here a few weeks, like Xavier Williams, or a guy who got here literally two days before the game, put in Spain, right? So, and then a bunch of young guys. We just came out with the right attitude, the attitude that we weren't going to be denied, and we just have to continue to let that evolve and mature. You mentioned earlier in the interview, Quinn Spain, um, you, you talked with Bengals media earlier today and you said he played with pure anger and rage. Well, what did you see from him that kind of gave you that impression? So what made me say that is I, I know I know Spain and he's already that type of aggressive um, uh, player, uh, that tough type of old school throwback grinder. The thing is, he's a guy who has been denied twice by two different teams. And when you experience something like that, that's going to bring a certain type of uh, fire up out of you. And he's experienced it. He didn't experience it in March or in the beginning of the camp. He experienced it this week when he had to come here to us. So whether he knew the scheme or not, he was playing on pure willpower and, and, and just want to over the guys across from him who've been working together 
all offseason last year. And it just shows when the man's on the mission, he's going to get things done. And that's what Spain did. So I have a tremendous amount of respect for him to come off of an airplane or, excuse me, get from being, you know, having the quarantine that guys had to go and step around the field and, and, and play for us and play some really good football against a good team. Throughout his career, Daniels has been used to some pretty good quarterback play. From his time with the Packers, he saw Aaron Rodgers up close and personal. His one year in Detroit, he saw Matt Stafford. And now with the Cincinnati Bengals, he gets to see Joe Burrow. We asked him his thoughts on number nine through eight games this season and how his abilities resonate in the locker room. I know you don't play on his side of the ball, per se, but Joe Burrow has shown quite a bit as a rookie quarterback. You played with a great one in Aaron Rodgers with the Green Bay Packers. Is there, I don't want to, you know, ascend Joe to a, a level quite yet after just a half a season of football, but is there, in your mind, as a defensive player, is there kind of a similar feeling in that we're going to be in every single game because of this guy who's under center, and even when the chips seem to be down in a game, this is the guy we feel can bring us back. No question. No, Joe was definitely a strong point. Definitely a strong point on this team. And quite frankly, we just got to get on the ball back. Got to take 10 points off the board on defense. We have to give him the ball back. And we're, we're going to like the results a lot more than, um, you know, if we didn't do those things. And uh, every week our defense will be better because we're taking the steps in the right direction. We did some things better than we did in Cleveland. Obviously, the box score wouldn't um, reflect that. But when you turn on the tape, we definitely showed uh, more physicality than we have all season. What What do you, just going back to kind of the Bengals team and where they're maybe headed this year, uh, this big win this week, and, you know, you've got what seems to be some winnable games at the back end of this schedule. Um, maybe playoffs are, are attainable, but uh, how how do you see the rest of the season playing out? And, and uh, has, has the team kind of turned a corner after this week eight win, you think, because they had been so close in so many other games and they just let them slip away. Uh, how are you How are you seeing the rest of this season play out for the team? Uh, Stumped them. Uh, we have to just take things one game at a time. And the, the season will write itself. We have eight games left, if I'm not mistaken, and one game at a time, one week seasons. And we have to go undefeated each week. Unfortunately for Daniels, the market for a defensive tackle in his 30s coming off of a year with some injuries wasn't initially very hot, but he relied upon his unique summer workout program and his creativity to keep in tip-top shape during the COVID crisis as teams began to show heavier interest later in the summer months. Part of uh, the reason there was maybe a little bit of a, an initial slow free agency market for you, you had some injuries last year, and part of your emphasis in terms of getting yourself out there again in, in 2020 was an off-season workout regimen and maybe dif differentiating yourself and differentiating your workouts. Can you talk a little bit about that and how that made you, uh, you know, be – healthier going into this free agency period and you know as you put yourself out there to teams um was that kind of a little bit of your hey look what i'm doing here and we'll, we'll share some of these videos too but look what i'm doing here i'm i'm you know keeping keeping the workouts going and, and being creative during the covid crisis yeah my my, my team you know they, my team was ready uh they knew it had to be done to show the nfl that i was ready to get back out there and play and my team consisted of my technique coach my uh, massage therapist uh, um, my, my movement coaches, people that were flying in to work with me when I was in uh, Detroit, um, my, my yoga uh, uh, instructor who I would Zoom with. You, you know, then when I got back to Green Bay, everybody who I worked with there, the chiropractors and the trainers, everybody knew we had to show that I'm ready to, to step back on the field. And that's the, not just step back on the field, but step on, back on the field and be effective, as we saw yesterday. So uh, that, that that's what the focus was this offseason and mission accomplished. I'm here in Cincinnati. And it was part of one of the bigger wins that uh, the NFL will see this season. So what is a workout that you had to do in quarantine that you wouldn't have ever thought to do or during regular times where you just had to put something together during with, with what the circumstances uh, were given to you? Yoga right here. Yeah. 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 That's, that's the yoga. Yeah. So um, I always did yoga and 
this was when I got back to Green Bay and I was able to actually get with my therapist. This is actually in my basement, right? So I always did yoga. I knew I had to get some flexibility. Uh, I had to improve my flexibility. And as you get longer in the tooth, being 31, I have to show people that I, I, my, my joints are good. My hips are open, knees are good, elbows, shoulders, toes, everything is good, man. I'm flexible. I'm, I'm bendy, as I would like to say, right? I, I can get in those awkward positions and come right out of them. You know, I, I have that flexibility to still have my explosion, which is if you have that box jump video, that, that'll show that. So, and, and those are the things they try to look for to um, players who are, you know, who, have, who are experienced and have been playing the game for as long as I have. Is he still explosive? Can he still run? Can he still move? Is he, is he, is he flexible? And also, <clears throat> I had to purchase a weight room. You know what I mean? I had to keep up on, on top of the NFL needs. I saw COVID was coming, or I saw quarantine was coming in Michigan. That's what kept us from going back to Green Bay. And I, you know, went, went and uh, just purchased a bunch of weight room equipment, built myself up a gym in my basement and in my garage. And, and I, I, I went to work. I went to work. Um, I, I consulted with my strength coach, Chris Doyle, uh, who, who just uh, left the University of Iowa. Uh, I, I consulted with um, my technique coach, and I, I really just uh, got to see the things I needed to do to, to make sure I was going. Uh, my technique coach was extremely creative to get me back. You can see this is a circuit here. You can see I'm jump roping with a mask on. Now, the mask was my touch, right? I, I wanted to torture myself so that I can be ready for anything. And, um, you know, I, I never really was a big jump roper until I got my technique coach, and he really made me um, – start doing that to really get that foot back going. And uh, I, I had, as you can see, I had to use the tree, <laughs> right? <laughs> and my technique coach wasn't there to uh, hold the band for me. My wife is pregnant. We have a, a, a one-year-old who's screaming right now in the video. You probably can't hear her. So, <laughs> hey, nature is your gym. Nature is your friend. So I'm going to hook myself up to a tree when who might give me a little bit more resistance than a human being. And there you go. My, my mind you, it was super hot out here. So I, you know, wearing uh, that was another thing. I wanted to wear. If you see my videos, unless I'm in the basement, I'm typically in sweats or a hoodie or with a mask on because I want to put myself in the most uncomfortable, disadvantageous uh, position that I possibly can be, so that when I step back onto the football field, I can be mentally ready. I want to put myself through a hell that no practice, no game, no opponent can put me through which is something that I've always hung my hat on. And this time it was more important for me to do that than ever. This is, this is intense, man. I mean, I, I, I like working out. I go to the gym a lot and this is, this is just, I'm, I'm watching this video that we're sharing here and it is, that's an intense workout. looks like it's, you know, a lot of different elements, including kind of circuit training. Cause you're just going right one, right into the next exercise yeah. here. Well, everything was simulating football, right? You got to get quick feet. You're going to have to go against resistance. You're going to have to get quick feet with movement. You're going to have to – that great band I have is extremely heavy, so I have to simulate getting the punch with fast feet moving. And then, at, I mean, I had to take the mask. I was about to pass out, literally. And to get, get, get and at, when I'm very extremely tired, I have to get my feet up. I have to remember to get my knees up, get my feet up, so I have the little hurdles there. And, and, and like I said, everything that we did was uh, simulating football on the and on the field things that there are – Football related, extremely football related. And quite frankly, I surprised myself with how ready I was when I stepped uh, into my first practices uh, here in Cincinnati. And it just let me know that what I did worked. By the way, this was just a regular Saturday <laughs> at the day <laughs> of Michigan. Stand, standard and, Saturday. Um, yeah. Have you gotten your, your new teammates onto these new regiments? Is, is any one of them just tough enough to actually do these things? <laughs> it's funny. As soon as I got to. Um, so, I, I mean, I had a lot of former teammates in Green Bay and Detroit. They would like all of my uh, videos and send a comment or in my story or DM me something, say, man, like, that's awesome stuff you're doing. And uh, I, I'm offering. I'm offering. You can come join any time, right? Uh, now, this is in, in my basement. And when, when I had gotten um, to Cincinnati, people instantly started asking me about – the stuff I was doing with the quick feet and with the bands. And when I had my off day, I did a pool workout. And as soon as I got back, the, the kind of the running joke was like, hey, man, Mike, can we go swimming? <laughs> Mike, when we going to go swimming, man? They were serious, though. Yeah. Another thing, too, I had to be a master at using bands, right? Obviously, you want to move weight, right? And uh, you, you want to get those weights on yourself. But the band work, the band, the band punches back. The weights, they just lay on you. But the band... 
you extend the band is coming back. The band is finding is 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 attacking you as well, simulating football once again. And I found out that they're amazing. Band work is it, it, it's phenomenal. It's phenomenal. My sister, who was in the military, I remember uh, my dad bought us some type of bands. You, you know, when I was uh, in, in middle school, and she came home and she said, "Yeah, those guys, they'll go to the gym with those bands and come out looking like bodybuilders." So. I, I, I really enjoyed the whole process, you know, and if you're going to do any of this stuff, you need to have a coach that's going to be effective. You know, I see a lot of guys doing things that it's, it, you know, they're not really simulating football. There's, there's a lot of stuff that just looks um, extremely circumstantial. Hey, I'm going to work this pass rush move. That'll only be effective in certain situations and things like that. And it's kind of what Deion Sanders said, right? He had a tweet that said, you got a lot of guys out here wasting money on people who aren't stimulating the game of football. The way I train is simulating football. We're using bands. Like I said, bands strike back. You're going to have resistance when you punch somebody, when mm -hmm. you get yourself in certain positions. And when you can see the way I play the game, run, pass, it all looks same, right? My motions and movement relate together, and they relate to on the field. And if you watch me in the game, you'll see exactly what I did with that great band in that video. You'll see me doing that to the center on the, the play where Ryan Tannehill threw the interception, the first interception. I took the band. I did that and got off. You'll see me do that to Ben Jones. I'll turn him just like that. Now, that's not something that I needed to get the proper pass set. I did it to him in the run game as well. We had a play where I was at the nose, uh, the shade, and I hit him and I turned him. And it made Derrick Henry bounce out. So the stuff I do was relatable to any situation on the football field. I'm not practicing throwing my hips around a guy who's just standing there. No, I'm getting my hands on you. I was a wrestler. Football is a combat sport, right, in the trenches. So yeah. Yeah. technique is incredibly effective, and you have to have the proper technique. You can't practice circumstantial things, okay? If you're, if you're going to be in the military, I'm sure they're not practicing shooting at stationary targets all the time because guess what? You ain't going to have stationary targets when you get on the field of battle, right? So right. I'm not going to practice moves jumping around a guy who's just standing there and not giving me a good look. I'm going to get my hands on a person who is well-versed in karate, uh, taekwondo, and, and uh, the art of wrestling, and we're going to get into some grappling because in the trenches, you're grappling. Whether you're in a pass rush, whether you're playing a run, you're consistently grappling, and that's what it's all about. You can see my techniques show up on the field. And it helps you also take care of the responsibilities of your scheme because I'm always in my gap. Talking with Mike Daniels, Bengals defensive lineman. I'm, I'm actually looking for this video that you referenced here, the, the Tannehill interception, to see if we can uh, – Yeah, so if I, I think it might have been play number eight. Yeah. Yeah, I got it up right here. Yeah, watch how I get to the center, and I do exactly what I did with that gray band in the video that you showed outside. It was ext yep, extent yep, yeah, right there. That's penetration. <laughs> now I would have liked to have executed it a little bit faster, but you know it's my second full game back, so that that'll that'll come that'll come along. How did you come about? I noticed on these Instagram shout posts. out to my coach. Got, got, shout out to my coach. Yeah, so TBR that, that, training. Got to give him that, some love. TBR training. That's that's where I was going next. Um, where where did you? How did you kind of come up? It's you've tagged a couple of different people. It looked like in these workout videos, workout videos we've shared from your Instagram account. You kind of created this little team to create this really unique off-season workout program in the COVID era. Uh, how did you kind of come about and find these specific people to to help you with these respective workout right. uh, workouts, exercises, and whatnot? So first, the very first video that I put out where I was tagging other people. Um, if I remember correctly, well, I had one in February and another one in Feb March, I believe. But I, I had a video where I had a easy curl bar with um, two 15 pound chains and a 55 pound plate on each side, which I think equal to about 200 pounds. And I was curling it and I tagged a bunch of people as a challenge. Not a challenge just to curl, but a challenge <laughs> to see, quite frankly, who has the balls to go and purchase all this equipment and do this in their basement right now while no gym is open. That was the real challenge. I know you guys can lift weights, but who's going to go and invest in getting ready? While or are you going to make excuses and say, "Oh, the gyms are closed. I'm not going to get my work in." So that was the so that was the first video when I tagged everybody. Other than that, I didn't tag anybody except for my trainer. 
and um, you know, really the NFL community, right? Who 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 who's who's NFL committed? Who is NFL committed? Who who is trying to get better, right? Now, this isn't the video, but you know, this is a 125 pound dumbbell curl, which I can do a lot cleaner now. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, yeah that, nice brag right there. Yeah, that, yeah. that's that's just grown man stuff right there. I mean, that's that's crazy. Yeah, well, that's and that's another thing. Who the hell has 125 pound dumbbells at their house? <laughs> I mean, I do. Seriously. I mean, I'm assuming you do too, right? <laughs> And, and and that's part of the reason why I was able to bounce back from the same injury I had that put me on IR last year. I was able to bounce back from it in three weeks. Two the, weeks, technically. The, the, the one you just sustained, you're talking about. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So that's that was one of the elements I wanted to, to talk about, too, is, you know, you got you, – you did a lot of work this offseason, obviously, to get back on the playing field, to get signed by the Bengals and, and contribute there. And then early in the season, you get the unfortunate injury once again. Um, you know, and credit to you and obviously these workouts, you came back very quickly from this, uh, from this injury and were effective right away when, when you were activated. I mean, I assume you credit all of this work as a large part as to why you were able to bounce back so quickly from that. Correct. Yeah, I, really. So I credit it to, um, the glory of God, first of all, right. Jesus saved me. He said, Hey, what kind of man are you? Do you really want football now? Or are you going to give up and quit? I was like, you know what, God, I'm a man, I'm a warrior, and I'm going to get to work. And that's what I did. Um, I have really smart people around me, and uh, I, I just I, I, I like to work with people who think outside the box, who go outside of the textbook, right, who aren't going to sit there and do what you're just going to see taught in a classroom, right, or what's just in a textbook, right? You have to think outside the box if you're going to try to, uh, you know, let's say, uh, uh, raise your game, so to speak, right? And, and my coach, he's a fast tracker. He, he's going to get me where I need to go very fast. I remember I sprained my Liz Frank. Those injuries are extreme. That's what I had happen last year was a Liz mm -hmm. Frank sprain injury. And I had to play in six weeks, and he got me back up and running, doing things outside the box, not doing the conventional um, rehab and recovery that most would do. So you have to go outside the box. If you want to be great at anything, you can't do what everybody else is doing. And, and I'm not saying just go do a whole bunch of, you know, random crap for the sake of being different. No, you, you have to find people who are going to effectively look outside the box, period. That, 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 that's it, you know, and that, that, that'll get you there. A, a guy that I really – admired and looked to was James Harrison. Mm. He, there was no box. He, he was gone. The box is here. James Harrison's over there. And that's why the guy got a contract to play linebacker at, at, at 39 years old because he works his tail off and he knows how to do it effectively. Yep. 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 You see, you, you see? That, yep. that's, that, that, that's what it's all about. And a lot of guys, Hey, I'm gonna squat this. So I'm gonna squat that. Okay. Well let's put 585 pounds on the squat rack and let's do a box squat where you squat and stop completely, then stand back up. And that's 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 where you go, because that's football. You're going to be from a complete stop, then you got to go. Well, so what kind of explosion do you have? See, that's thinking outside the box. When you do that, you're going to say, oh, we're not going to go heavyweight, and we do, I'm just going to scrape the top. No, we're going to sit on there, get completely stopped, let all of our, uh, uh, our body systems shut down, then we're going to instantly spike it back up to stand back up. That's not easy to do. You got me ready to, to run through a freaking brick wall, man. I haven't got my workout in yet today. So wow. I'm, I'm going to, after this, I'm going to go uh, go hit the weights, I think. Well, good thing you got this recorded. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, then I could just play it on loop, right? Uh, That's right. Yeah. Uh, John, it looks like John, and we're going to share it in just a second, the actual play you referenced, um, the Tannehill interception. It looks like he's got that queued up, so we can maybe take a look at that in a sec. Just a, a quick kind of follow up fun question for you. What do you what do you vibe out to in terms of music when you work out? Do you do you what 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 are some of your jams you like to to listen to when you work out or do you not even listen to music? Are you just so focused in that music isn't really part of your workout? I am um, quite frankly I I can go from Christian rap to hardcore gangster rap to Drake, you know what I mean, like 90s R&B, baby making music, 
<laughs> the freaking, you know, them bones by Allison Chains. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm like, listen, whatever vibe I'm in, that that's what I'm listening to, man. But either way, the muscles are going to respond. The muscle fibers are going to respond, and it's going to do my body wonders, as you guys saw. Daniels had an immediate impact upon his return to the Bengals lineup after a brief stint on IR. When the Bengals defeated the Titans in Week 8, there was a critical moment in the game where Ryan Tannehill threw a crucial first-quarter red zone interception. As we went back over the tape with Daniels, he pointed out to us the moves he made on the Tennessee offensive linemen to create pressure and force this throw by Ryan Tannehill. He credited his off-season workouts for the techniques and strength used on this specific play. Yeah, let's let's talk. Oh, there about, it goes right there. Yeah. So if you if you wouldn't mind, can you maybe walk us uh, walk us through this again once it, it's back on loop here? Right on those. Yeah. Here. So you know. I'm coming out of my stance, get my hands on the center. And that's what we're supposed to do. I notice this pass. I, after I get good power on him, you see I turn his entire body. That's mm -hmm. exactly – you'll see me do that with the, this gray band all the time. Then you'll even see me do it with weights. Also, you'll see me – I have what I will do steering with a plate. That's what I'm doing with his body. I'm mm -hmm. turning him, opening him up so I can get going. And I'm not afraid to reveal this because I have plenty of tricks up my sleeve. So this is just the one that I chose for this play. Well, you're and as yeah, you can you're see, right. it's, it, he almost turned his entire body yeah. to his back is to the end zone by the end of the play. Mm -hmm. It's not normal. You see four defensive linemen there just get complete penetration like that. Right. right. Good play. Yeah. Yeah, it was a good play. Mike, Great. I always pegged you for a future coach, but it sounds like you got a future in just weight training. But isn't that like important for the for the coaches to have knowledge of like all that goes into training and, and just overall like in the strength and conditioning part, part of it? Yeah, and the coaches have a great knowledge. They have they they know exactly what they're doing. A lot of times they can uh, only do so much. You know, in college they get free reign. That's why Coach Doyle is so amazing, right? He does what he wants because he's dealing with college kids. You can't. He, 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 they're giving him full reins, and you see the products he built. I was a 207 pound wrestler who's now a, a, a 300 pound Pro Bowl defensive tackle in the NFL. I, 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 how you go from that? I don't know, but he definitely got that out of me. So the NFL coaches, they're all college coaches, they know what they can do. It's a little different though, because they're dealing with so many different ages, so many different body types, so many different attitudes. If a coach comes in with that, training session that's going to really get you going, you might get some guys that are going to fight back against that and go, you know, tell management, hey, I don't like his program. It's too hard. <laughs> so um, really what they are what they have been unfortunately uh, uh, relegated to having to do is just helping us maintain our strength throughout the league. Now, if you want to do some things and push it, they, they will encourage you to do that. And I've been doing that my entire career. But right now, the baseline is just making sure we can maintain what we've already built. And that's how a lot of guys would prefer it. And I, will, I don't understand it, but I do know that every single coach I've ever had, I've been on three different NFL teams, and we all have great reports because I want to do more. And they will draw up a workout for me to be able to do more. And I'm very thankful for every coach I have from Coach uh, Labatt, Gizzy, um, Thad, you know what I mean, Harold Nash, and uh, now with Coach Joe. Very thankful. Talking with Mike Daniels, one of our program's favorite, hands down, favorite guests that we have had on, on this program. Love talking to this guy. Uh, just a couple more questions for you, Mike, and we appreciate the long amount of time that, that you're giving us. Um, I guess, there, you know, there may be our, our audience is pretty wide in terms of who listens to our program. You, we may have some people out there who are uh, high school or, you know, younger football coaches. We may have some folks out there that are parents and their kids are starting to kind of get into adolescence and get into football, that sort of thing, and are looking for to get them into a workout regimen. Um, you being the workout warrior that you are, what, what are some kind of pieces of advice maybe that you, you want to give out there for maybe kids that are looking to start a football-oriented type of workout regimen or coaches as they coach younger football players? What are some pieces of advice, if any, that you may have on that front? Oh, um, wow. Because, I mean, I, I've held camps and I've 
spoke to high school coaches, parents, and kids all the time, and I said uh, they should take it easy and do more technique, you know, do more technique training and then, then, then lifting, really, because a lot of times when, when you're lifting, you don't know what you're doing. When I was in high school, I was very inquisitive. I was going online. What, what's, what can I do to make my neck thicker, my neck stronger, right? I had a skinny neck. What can I do to build up my calves, right? That's how I learned about the soleus and the gas. What can I do to make my forearm strong? What can I do to – I had fractured my growth plate in my wrist. What can I do to make my wrist stronger, my, my hand grip strength stronger? A lot of high school kids, they, they're not constantly taking that evaluation of what do I need to build on, what muscle groups are lacking, how do I get stronger, how do I get more explosive. So um, they're, they're kind of left to their own devices. So – I would say definitely get a coach and, and be safe. You know, take it easy, do a lot, and take take it easy. Not saying don't work hard, uh, uh, um, but but more so of take the time to think. Use your brain. Don't just go in the weight room and just try to lift all the ways you can. No, think about what you're doing. Think about the muscle groups. Think about um, concentric and eccentric movements. If I'm curling. Then I know my tri if I'm curling my bicep, my triceps relaxing, right? So if I'm working my bicep, I should probably work. I should I should probably leave my tricep alone unless I'm doing a superset to do a bodybuilder workout, right? And and a lot a lot of times, you know, and this, this is another thing: monitor past injuries, right? Like I said, I had a fractured growth plate. Ever since then, I've built up the strongest wrist, forearms, and grip probably in the NFL from the time I I uh, uh, had that injury up until now. So you got to monitor your past injuries, nicks, snacks, and bruises that you may get. And um, if not rehab, they, they can hurt worse, and they'll be there for the rest of your career. College, NFL, if you make it, the injury you had in high school can show back up if the body doesn't heal correctly. So definitely, you know, uh, getting the technique work, find a, find a good coach. Find a good coach outside of your um, – uh, outside of your uh, 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 high school or whatever, find a good coach and, and, and get on a good program. Start learning. Start learning about nutrition. Start learning about amino acids and proteins and things of that nature, right? Uh, and just just give yourself the best uh, physical advantage you can. That information is out there. It's out there. It wasn't out there as much. Uh, it wasn't out there as much when uh, we, we were coming up as it is now. So I would say take full advantage of that. Nine years in the league, 31 years old, still going strong. I think the results kind of speak for themselves. Well, thanks, Mike. You're the man. We love having yeah, you on, man. Right, we'll right. have you on anytime yeah. you want to you wanna join us. Absolutely. Been a pleasure. Thanks for having me. All right. Our thanks to Mike Daniels and EAG Sports Management for the opportunity once again to sit down with us and chat some, about some football and about some personal aspects of Mike Daniels' life. We hope you enjoyed this feature. Go back and check out the full first interview as well. Thanks for listening.